the financing of, uh, of the dramatic increase in government spending and the Fed's massive purchases of U.S. Treasuries has led to a major decline in the U.S. dollar. The weaker dollar is a major factor in the rise of worldwide crude oil prices, and in, in dollar terms, offsetting some of the decline of oil demand in the worldwide recession. So oil demand is down, but because of the weak dollar, oil prices have been able to uh, hold, which is important for Houston. Increase in crude oil prices are a major factor for Houston's energy industry. Uh, increasing oil prices are a major stimulus to operating cash flows in the Houston-based oil exploration, production, and oil field equipment and service companies. A lot of the tenants uh, and users, owners in the industrial sector are oil, oil and gas-based service companies and oil-related companies. So having a healthy oil price and a, and a robust oil market is obviously what's, dry, what's making Houston the uh, positive market that it is. Uh, Great news. This, year, this time last year, uh, the North American Baker Hughes rig count was at uh, 1,089 rigs for 2009, and today it's 1,687 rigs. So the rig count is up 55% from this time last year. So that, that means that a lot of Houston companies are doing a lot of work. Uh, also, with the offshore uh, moratorium on drilling, uh, what we're seeing is is all of that activity has moved onshore in Texas, so we got a lot of activity in, uh, go, uh, in oil and gas in Texas. If they ever work out the offshore component, then that, that will just add uh, more activity to uh, the Houston companies. About one-third of our economic base in Houston, in Houston is dependent upon uh, energy, and employment gains are really uh, forecasted uh, uh, ahead for the Houston-based energy and service companies. You might think that, oil, that higher oil prices is a negative impact on the downstream refining and petrochemical processors, uh, when actually uh, a more important factor uh, is their ability to compete in the worldwide market. And as long as the ratio of the oil uh, price per barrel to the gas price per in MCF exceeds six, then it's economical for all the refineries and, and, uh, and uh, plastic companies to uh, produce. So right now, Natural gas is at $4 an MCF. Oil is at $80 a barrel. So that ratio is 20. So the uh, the ratio. So gas prices can increase if oil stays the same, and we're still way below. We're still you know way within the bracket of the six six times uh, for them to produce. We have a lot of refineries and things on the petrochemical plants on the ship channel, and uh, and. Houston Industrial makes a good living in transporting all those products, uh, rail and trucks, and bringing them in and storing them and, and handling them. And, uh, and so we want them to continue to uh, produce those. Uh, for the first uh, nine months of 2010, the Houston Galveston Customs District uh, reported uh, $150 billion in uh, trade. Uh, through the port, which is up 26% from the same time last year. So trade is up 26%. Uh, it breaks down to uh, the $154 billion breaks down into $86 billion uh, in imports and $68 billion in exports. Uh, the Port of Houston handled 220 million tons of cargo last year. Uh, it's rated uh, the largest uh, port for foreign uh, tonnage of cargo. And it also led the nation in exports uh, of 66 million tons for, uh, for exports out. So we're, we're bigger in those sectors. So in addition to that, uh, you know, the new Bayport container facility is, uh, is, is up and running and has expansion capabilities, so that should bite us well going forward. Uh, a big factor to watch, and I've talked about it for, uh, for some time, uh, if, if you actually go on Google Earth, you can see the Panama Canal under construction, so there's not just you know, a sales pitch, they're actually uh, widening the Panama Canal. And the important thing for Houston is, uh, and that canal will be finished in 2014, so not too long in the near future that'll be finished. The important thing is, if you look at this graphic, the, 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 gra the graphic on the top is the size of the current locks and ships that can go through those locks. So a, uh, uh, a cargo uh, container that you see going down the road or on trucks is 20 or 40 feet long. They're rated in what's called TEUs. A, uh, the small ship on the top holds 4,400 TEUs, and that's all that can fit through the Panama Canal right now. 
The big ship on the bottom holds 12,600 TCU, so almost three times the capacity. And that's what that, those are the locks that they're constructing, and those are the ships that are currently coming out of China and everywhere. Right now, they're having to dock in California, and then we're trucking uh, or putting them on rail cars to get to uh, Texas and the central part of America. Once this opens up, or we'll be able to come, they'll be able to come right through the Panama Canal, right into the port of Houston, uh, which will really uh, increase uh, uh, our access uh, to uh, the rest of the world from, a, and then we can distribute from here up. So that's 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 something that is coming our way, uh, and uh, and we have the luckily our port authority had the foresight to uh, do. Uh, the uh, Bayport facility and, and provide for expansion. So that's that's really good news for Houston Industrial. Uh, with our lower cost of living is a major factor for corporate and manufacturing relocations to our region. Uh, the uh, in the based on the third quarter results, Houston's cost of living is 19 percent uh, below the average of 27 metropolitan areas with two million. Uh, population or, or below. So put that in your sales pitch when you're talking to c people about coming to Houston is that we're 19 percent below the other average. According to the American Chamber of Commerce Research, uh, cost of living index is where that's based on. Uh, after many months of job losses, employment in the Houston area is finally showing gains. The 10 county uh, area uh, gained 6,200 jobs from October 08 uh, to October 2010. Uh, that's not much of a gain, but it is a gain. As, show, as uh, Joel showed on some of his charts, you know, it's compared to the rest of the nation and compared to where we are, uh, you know, that's, that's good news for Houston. So we're kind of holding tight. Uh, I think Davy Crockett had it right in 1835. Uh, he was kind of the first guy to come here. <laughs> That's precisely what we're witnessing uh, in, in Texas right now. The, uh, uh, the state government, the, the governor's office has a state Texas enterprise fund, which is used to uh, provide uh, seed money and economic incentives to get uh, companies to relocate here. It's, uh, it's contributed almost $400 million uh, in economic development. Uh, that has resulted in 53,000 jobs and $14 billion of new capital investment in the state of Texas. A couple of recent uh, examples in our area is uh, Caterpillar is relocating a major uh, hydraulic excavator facility uh, uh, from, the, uh, uh, <clears throat> from Michigan down uh, to Victoria, Texas. And that's going to add uh, 238 jobs and another 123 uh, million in uh, direct investment. Uh, there's also recently announced a new um, high voltage lattice transmission tower uh, uh, manufacturing company from uh, India that is uh, moving, uh, that is going to move into Conroe uh, that will have a $34 million capital investment and 157 new jobs. So we're seeing a lot of out-of-state uh, uh, people uh, come into Texas, and we're talking to a lot of them, uh, and so our absorption is being fueled by those, both those things. Uh, in summary, we're fortunate to be located in Texas, and, Texas, and particularly uh, in Houston. Our challenges remain the slowing recovering of the national economy. So as long as the national economy is recovering slowly, uh, we're, uh, uh, we will be uh, slowed down by that, but at least we're holding our own and uh, moving forward. Rising interest rates could increase costs of future development of projects and reduce investor returns on existing properties. Uh, we still have the ongoing fight between the lenders uh, and the regulators. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly, the lenders are uh, taking back control, but it's not looking good right now. Uh, we see a few brave souls diving into the water. Uh, they were sitting on the fence last year, uh, but the uncertainty is, uh, uh, that has paralyzed us a year ago has moved forward. Uh, this pretty much depicts our cautious optimism that we will exp experience a moderate, moderate pickup in the industrial sector for 2011. Uh, Texas is benefited by a business-friendly government, and that's why we see so many people uh, coming here. Uh, we still see... Uh, Economic fog is, slow, is starting to lift, and we're, our vision is getting a little bit better through the windshield, but we can't see too far down the road, so I think everybody is just uh, moving forward uh, slowly, but uh, in a positive direction. Uh, we really see a lot of projects that were on hold back under construction. Uh, we'll see 
uh, you know, financing picking up. Rental rates uh, would be ticking up slightly this year, but not a lot. Uh, barring a major upward spikes in the interest rates, uh, cap rates for sales should remain in the seven and a half to low eight of percent cap rates for next for this coming year. For projects with solid uh, tenancies and sellers of industrial projects should be able to consummate transactions. So our deal flow will definitely increase in 2011. Uh, thank you very much. Appreciate it.